On the sixth day of October, Halloween gave to me six body swapping, five reads of wolfing, four drunken uncles, three werewolf colonies, two spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Welcome back to another episode of the 31 Days of Halloween here on LegionPodcasts.com. Uh, I am Bo Ransdell. I am your uh, tour guide through these 31 films. Uh, so here's what we do. Every year on the Legion Podcasts, uh, I, I do 31 movies. They will never repeat. In some cases, they are movies I have seen. In some cases, they are movies I have not uh, the Mephisto Waltz is the movie for today, and this was actually a recommendation uh, from the Ram Man, and I had never seen it, which is crazy because I like everything <laughs> that uh, this movie offers up, which is Alan Alda, uh, some some deviltry, uh, some magic spells and whatnot, and some good old fashioned body swapping. Um, I like all that stuff. Uh, th- this is sort of um, you know, Satanic Freaky Friday, which I enjoy. Um, so what? All right, so let's get to it. What is the Mephisto Waltz about? First of all, it's an older film, uh, by which I mean I, it's in the seventies, nineteen seventy one, I believe is. Uh, yeah, nineteen seventy one is is when this movie was made. Uh, directed by Paul Wincos, who was a television director, and. Produced by a guy named Quinn Martin, who was a television producer, and somehow or another, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of good information on the Wikipedia, unfortunately, but uh, somehow or another, they get the rights to this novel by a guy named Fred Mustard, St- <laughs> Fred Mustard Stewart, which is a great name. Um, he is somewhat related to Kevin Ketchup Williams. Sorry. Uh, and it was written by a guy named Ben Maddow did the, the screenplay and it's got a pretty good cast. I like Alan Alda a lot. Uh, I think he is an interesting actor and Jacqueline Bissett, who is a former Bond girl, uh, and just a, a absolutely beautiful woman and, and very good in this. Uh, and look, if you want to win my heart, you put a Bradford Dillman in your movie and this has a Bradford Dillman, which, uh, I appreciate. Uh, then Barbara Perkins plays the the daughter of the uh, satanic pianist in this, which is uh, Kurd Jurgens is the 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 guy's name, the actor who plays Duncan Eli. So, what is the Mephisto Waltz about? Uh, so, Alan Alda is a music journalist, former piano player, a pianist himself, but was never very good at it. And uh, he is married to Jacqueline Bissett. They have a daughter together. And on a on an interview that he's conducting with this guy, Duncan Eli, um, at first, Duncan Eli is a little cold to him, isn't real into uh, Alan Alda interviewing him. But then he gets a look at his hands. And this is just a good rule of thumb, everybody. If... Uh, you are conducting an interview with someone and they get suddenly interested in a part of your anatomy and then start inviting you to a bunch of parties and stuff, you're probably being set up for some Satanist shit. And and that's exactly what happens here. Duckett Eli says, you know, oh, look at his hands. They're one in a hundred thousand hands. And uh, his daughter, Roxanne, who he uh, seems to have a bit of an incestuous relationship with, um, is like, yeah, those are pretty good hands. Hey, uh, let me take a, a mold of your face. Um, and, uh, and so what happens is, uh, they, they swap bodies, uh, with the aid of some magic that Roxanne has a, a book that's written in French. And, uh, and so one night Duncan Eli passes away while Alan Alda is in the house and his, his soul kind of transfers to, uh, Alan Alda's character, Miles Clarkson. And so what follows is a little bit of Jacqueline Bissett 
realizing that her, there's something fishy going on with her husband, especially because he is now a super good piano player. Uh, piano player sounds like he should be in the old west. But he's a, he is a pianist. He is like a concert pianist. And uh, in fact, the the title of the movie, the Mephisto Waltz, comes from um, the the Friends List uh, piece the, that he composed. And so uh, Alan Alda is acting a little fishy, acting a little bit hoity-toity, you know. Uh, and also, Duncan Eli has left a lot of money to Miles Clarkson. Which isn't a bad idea. Like, as far as Satanist schemes go, sort of, you know, killing somebody to steal their body and leave all your money to them is a pretty good way to, to kind of, uh, you know, get immortality, right? And so uh, that is the Duncan Eli scheme. Um, then they also, as part of this ritual, they have to kind of sacrifice Alan Alda and Jacqueline Bissett's daughter, which they do in one of the more shocking moments of like, oh, they just fucking killed this kid using creepy magic and whatnot. And that's really the point where Jacqueline Bissett is hot on the trail of like, hey, there is something really fishy going on. Uh, not only because my daughter died of some kind of freakish sudden illness, but also my husband no longer uh, likes me smoking. And uh, it does not seem particularly upset about the death of our daughter. And so she ends up hooking up uh, both figuratively and literally with Bradford Dillman, who is the ex-husband of Roxanne. And at first, he doesn't really want to get involved too much. But then uh, after a little bit of pushing from uh, Jacqueline Bissett and a little bit of drinking from Bradford Dillman, he sort of comes clean like, yeah, they're all Satanists. And they think that that lets them run the world. And he doesn't really believe it so much, but he's certainly not crazy about the idea of, of running afoul of it. And so he and Jacqueline Bissett have a, a weekend uh, with each other. And the next thing you know, he's lying dead on the beach with a little blue dot on his head, which is sort of the mark of uh of the satanists like alan alda had it before they swapped bodies and the little girl had it on her head before she died and bradford dillman uh had it and uh the next thing you know jacqueline Bissett has a has a blue uh paint on her forehead too and ends up in the hospital um but not dead and there's a moment i really like where she tells a friend of hers like i'm a little tougher than they expected and so her scheme is then to get the book from Roxanne and do a little dipsy doodle with her and steal Roxanne's body, which she apparently does, and um, and and ends up drowning uh, herself in the tub uh, during this process. So anyway, the end of the movie, which I, I really like, this is a thing I, re I really didn't uh, really enjoyed in the course of the film was there's all this kind of swapping of body. So at the end of the movie, Duncan Eli is in Alan Alda's body while Jacqueline Bassett is in Roxanne, the daughter's body. And, uh, the movie kind of ends with you, the audience knowing what's up, but him not really understanding that this has taken place. And the, implication is that she's going to kill him uh, or certainly do something to him. and but that's not you you don't get that payoff which I think is a little disappointing but for a movie that is uh, I mean it didn't seem real long um, it is eh, it's almost two hours long as I look at the IMDB page for it um, it has a, a nice pace to it and it's got kind of a mean spirited uh, attitude, which I like it. Like it's not completely gnarly, but it's definitely dark. And I really enjoy that. There's a, a orgy scene in kind of the first third of the movie um, where you get some full frontal nudity that seems a little shocking in a Quinn Martin production, uh, as well as being a movie from 1971. 
but it's really uh, kind of fascinating uh, as a, almost a historical artifact of like, hey, here's this movie that is now 50 years old and uh, has some like interesting, an interesting combination of actors. Like you don't normally think of Alan Alda and Jacqueline Bassett in the same film. Um, <laughs> is this crazy? Uh, he says, um, I really enjoyed it though. I thought it was it, like, this is, uh, one of a handful of things that I haven't seen yet. And I, I'm always excited because you never know when you're going to run into something that is, uh, that's really going to blow your, your hair back. And I don't know that Mephisto Waltz is that kind of movie. Like it's not, it's not flashy in that way where at the end of it, you're like, Oh my goodness. Uh, what, what just happened to me? What visual treat have I just enjoyed? It's more, uh, a, a, like I said, it's kind of a curiosity, but it's a good curiosity. Like it, it's got a good story and it, it's got uh, a nasty streak in it that really keeps things moving and, and really kept me interested in it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, as far as being something, you know, all right off the bat, I think this may be the first thing that I hadn't seen on the list. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so on day six here, we're getting our, our first film that is uh, a complete unknown. And I really enjoyed it. I had a really good time with it. It's uh, it's available on Amazon Streaming is where I picked it up. And uh, looks good. Pretty good transfer. And uh, has some groovy 70s uh, kind of camera work. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know... You, like weird fades and dissolves and the the party feels like it's right out of the shining even though this came out nine years before the shining did but it's got that kind of like debaucherous evil kind of vibe to it um and Jacqueline Bissett makes a great heroine so um yeah uh, this is gonna be uh probably one of the shorter uh conversations that we have but I'm curious if you have seen the Mephisto Waltz, by all means, uh, let me know what you thought of it. I'm very curious uh, to hear if the Ram Man uh, felt like I did it justice, even though we're not talking about it forever, uh, like we did The Howling, which was like 30 minutes worth of uh, filleting Joe Dante in that film. But you know, in fairness, the Mephisto Waltz, eh, not as good as The Howling. All right, let's be all, all be honest with one another here. It's really good. It's really interesting. I'm glad I saw it. Uh, I don't know if Kiss the Goat has done it yet, but they should have. Uh, I need to. I need to talk to X about that and and tell him to get on it. But yeah, really good. Really kind of a fun party watch almost. It, it's got a little bit of cheese to it, but not not excessively. Like it's not campy, but it just is of its time. It's it's of the early 1970s, and so. Uh, feels a little bit, um, mm, I, you know, a, certainly self-serious, but there's also a, a freewheeling kind of attitude. Like, I really like Bradford Dillman as this drunken playboy ex-husband. And, and only in the 70s do you have Alan Alda as some sort of sex object, uh, as well as Bradford Dillman, who looks like he ought to be uh, wiring your house you know uh, he's not really a leading man looking guy but he's he was in lots of stuff you know he's a great character actor and um, you know it was, uh, recently I, I heard somebody talk about how in the uh, the 60s and 70s like a character actor could be a leading man and it just doesn't happen that much anymore like Paul Giamatti may may have been the last crossover People like Paul Giamatti and Steve Buscemi and uh, John Turturro and people like that who aren't leading men in, and they're not like movie stars, but they're great actors and they're great in everything that they're in and and somehow have crossed over from, hey, I know that guy from somewhere to, oh, that's Paul Giamatti. He's amazing. Uh, so it's always fun to see a movie that's kind of stacked with those kinds of character actors like Bradford Dillman and Alan Alda in the same movie feels like a thing that shouldn't happen, but it did, and I couldn't be happier about it. And I wish I could do an Alan Alda impression. That's what, really, that's what all this comes down to. 
is the fact that I'm very disappointed that I could not do this whole conversation in an Alan Alda voice, and I really wanted to, but I just couldn't get it right. My impressions are not great to begin with, but that one was, it wasn't even close. Um, you heard uh, like three words of it, and it was just uh, unbearable. So <laughs> anyway, the Mephisto Waltz is uh, a real good time. I recommend it. I appreciate the recommendation uh, from the Ram Man. Um, if you would like to send me a recommendation, uh, please feel free to. You can uh, at me at uh, Legion Podcasts on uh, Twitter. You can drop by the, the Facebook page or the Facebook group and just tag me um, and, uh, and, and let me know if there's a movie you want to hear me talk about or want to expose me to this Halloween season. So long as I did not do it last year, I am open to it. And so long as uh, it, uh, it, that particular message comes along at a time, where I haven't finished recording all of these. Um, spoilers, if you want to hear uh, some pulling back the curtain kind of stuff, uh, just so I can get one of these out every day, I don't do it the day before. <laughs> but um, I hope you are enjoying it. I'm having so much fun. It's so exciting to be talking about uh, horror movies around Halloween, and especially horror movies I haven't seen. I got uh, sort of a mini run of those coming up pretty soon. And uh, some classics that I've never seen that I'm really looking forward uh, to watching and talking about. So, anyway, thanks for, for listening to this. I hope you're having a wonderful Halloween season. The first week is almost up, so let's savor it. You know, drink deep of the marrow of Halloween and, and really appreciate this time of year. It's when the weather starts to get good, the leaves start to turn and fall. Uh, we, we get to turn on the heat or, or fire up the fireplaces if you live somewhere that's not you know on fire on account of climate change or something uh and and if you do then for god's sakes don't don't start a fire uh in, in your house or anywhere else we got enough of them apparently so anyway point is i hope you have a great day enjoy yourselves enjoy the season enjoy the holiday we've got uh another 25 movies is that right uh, 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 number seven through 31. Does that sound right? 25 movies, 24 movies, something like that. Hard for me to do math. Um, and uh, <laughs> I was an English major. What do you want out of me? So, uh, enjoy yourselves and stay spooky out there. <laughs>